Year 9 and welcome to lesson 3 of data science. So in uh, year 9 you've got term 4 data science. This lesson is under lesson 3 and the video will be attached here. There is also an additional question which is the outcome of the last worksheet that you will need to answer when you do this same assignment. So today uh, just for a starter we're going to be looking at this graph. So we looked at Gapminder in the last lesson, let's pull that up now. So this is what you will be presented with. And you are asked to figure out what is being displayed on the graph. Does it show a trend? And where are the anomalies? And why do you think the anomalies have occurred? So this you will need to capture in the A0 worksheet. So this is the A0 worksheet. It has a link to that Gapminder graph in the worksheet. So under L3, Statistical State of Mind, there is a zero worksheet. What data is being displayed on the graph? So I'm going to have a little look at this. I can see, like, have a look at the axes. What's being plotted against what? There are filters here. What are we filtering on? Um, and then kind of what does it show? So anomalies are, if there's a trend... And you can see a kind of line here. This is a fairly good pattern. Anomalies are those blobs that are outside of the pattern, like these little ones here. So I want you to have a look at those, have a look at what's being plotted, and see if you can account for them. Um, so in the worksheet, does the graph show a trend? Where are the anomalies? Why do you think they've occurred? I think you'll probably be able to figure it out. So... In this lesson, we're going to be talking about correlation and outliers. Uh, we're going to be looking at something called the investigative cycle. So looking at data, data science is something that's always kind of feeding into itself, something that goes round and round and round as we refine our ideas of what is true and what we can observe in data. Um, and we're going to solve a problem by implementing the steps of the cycle on a particular data set and make a recommendation um, based on what we observe. So what was being shown on the graph, um, it was comparing life expectancy with income. And um, so basically, the for, and it was only for France, so it's filtered on France. So as the um, average income of France went up, so does the life expectancy. There's a clear correlation there, which is kind of what you would expect. And the outliers, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to find at least one of the reasons. Um, so there's the trend. And... Um, this is what's known as a positive correlation. So as the income goes up, the life expectancy goes up. So a negative correlation is something where if one goes up, the other goes down. Uh, probably wouldn't be life expectancy and income, but some other things might have a negative correlation. Um, so a positive correlation is just sloping upwards like that. The thing with correlation is it doesn't always mean causation. Well, so what do I mean by that? So just because there is a nice line when you plot one thing against another that kind of goes either down or up or it's straight or whatever, just because there is some sort of correlation, it doesn't mean the two things cause each other. It's one of uh, the sort of fallacies that people often make mistakes with. Just because you can observe a correlation, there could be other factors at play. Data is always quite reductive by its very nature. So uh, the example it has here is there is likely to be a correlation between ice cream sales and the weather. Does that mean that ice cream sales cause hot weather? So that might sound kind of silly. There's a link there for more kind of spurious correlations. Probably worth a look. Um, of course, ice cream sales don't cause hot weather, but hot weather might cause ice cream sales. So sometimes the direction of the correlation um, is the point there are mistakes, but sometimes the correlation is is kind of a coincidence. Um, so you can go and visit the spurious correlations one if you want to see some more amusing examples. So where are the anomalies in the data? Well, in here, um, most of it's kind of in this upward trend, but um, I'm going to let you figure out the, uh, the outliers. I'm, not, I'm going to skip over that. So next up, the investigative cycle, and this is what we're going to go around today. Um, as everything these days is shortened down some annoying acronym, PPDAC, um, Problem, Plan, Data, Analysis, Conclusions. It makes a nice diagram anyway. Um, but this idea of a cycle is very strong and these stages are all quite distinct and you need to spend time on each of them if you're doing any serious data science. So when we talk about the problem, we're talking about 
what are we going to try and determine here? What questions are we going to try and answer? Um, what context are we operating in? So we might say, what is the average number of goals scored in the first half for teams in the Premier League? So why would you even want to know that? Well, that might have an impact on the training schedule, the, the things you do in training, or the intensity with which you play games, this kind of thing. Um, so there's always got to be some sort of purpose. We don't just make correlations for the fun of it. Um, and we have to, this, this example here has variables that can be compared to one another. So the time through the game and the goals being scored. So we need to identify those variables and really understand the problem that we're working with The plan, that's where we try and figure out well, where are we going to get this data from and how are we going to collect it. And so uh, with Premier League goals, obviously the last 20, 30, 40 years, that's pretty easy data to get hold of. How far are we going to go back? How far does it make sense to go back? It probably, you know, it might not make sense to go back to the 70s um, if you're trying to figure out how to train for today. Um, so you've got to figure all this kind of thing out and figure out where the data is going to come from and how good it's likely to be. Obviously, number of goals in Premier League games, you'd expect the data to be pretty accurate, but there will be plenty of problems where the data might be quite woolly and have all sorts of quality caveats to it. Especially if you're talking about polling in elections, that's probably one of the ones where the biggest howlers are dropped. So then we're looking at the data. We've got to gather the data. So that might be putting out surveys, that might be kind of running around and counting things, um, that could just be putting kind of measurement measurement devices in place and then figure out does it need cleaning in any way? Does it need a, unnecessary detail removing? Um, if we're talking about polls, um, kind of sensible answers, kind of filtering that kind of thing out and removing those inaccurate data if you detect some problem with the data. Um, so then the analysis is that exercise of plotting the data and trying to see if there's any patterns. So visualizing it, we've looked at visualizing data as a really strong means of finding patterns, but as you have started to see, there are a lot of different ways of visualizing, visualizing data and it's a very creative field. And you just write down those kind of correlations, patterns, uh, and any outliers. Um, and this is just kind of observing those things because the next step is where you try and draw conclusions, where you've got to be really, really careful. And the conclusions are only going to be as strong as all the steps that you've done before then. So have can we say something concrete here? Can we say something useful that is going to help us make a decision? Is it going to give us some case for taking action? Or has it just led to further questions. If it's led to further questions, you might need to go around this circle several times. And I think for some, uh, many fields, this circle is a continual exercise. So the example we're going to look today is uh, a roller coaster. So River Kingdom is a new theme park opening in the UK, and they want us to recommend some design considerations for their roller coasters. Uh, they know that the roller coasters are not allowed to be taller than 350 feet due to limitations of the site, but apart from that, it's kind of all good. Um, and so, in terms of defining the problem, if we just said what makes a really cool roller coaster, that is a not not very well defined problem. There are no variables there. The level of coolness is probably is the most woolly thing ever. So we need to think about what variables define a coaster. So if you're looking at a roller coaster, what what could you count? What uh, sort of numbers could exist? And have a bit of a think about that. And uh, pause the video and then kind of come back. So here are some things that you could count, things that you could actually measure. The speed of the roller coaster, like the max speed or the average, the height that it reaches, um, any drops, the number of twists and loops, which are sort of generically referred to as inversions, the length, so some coasters are quite long, some coasters are quite short but sharp, um, how long it takes in time, so you've got the length and distance and the duration in time, um, and the position that the person is expected to be in. Are they sitting down, are they suspended, like in air in Norton Towers, um, that kind of thing. And so we are going to look at some data in this for this. So there's a link here, and we're now jumping over to the A3 worksheet. So in the A3 worksheet, i um, put a link to this in the classwork, um, you need to get to this data. So the link in the slides takes you here. And let me actually just reset my thing of that. Yeah, so I'm going to take that. 
and uh, put that in here and just get exactly what you'll be presented with. Reload, here we go. Yeah, so you're given this common data analysis platform, and here is the raw data down the left hand side. And it's just got for every single roller coaster what park it's in, the city, the state. So this is American stuff, obviously, whether it's wooden or steel, whether they're sat down or that kind of thing, year of open, basically just loads of variables. And in the middle here, you have a visualization of that data, and you need to decide what things you might plot. Um, so this is the worksheet, and you have to come up with two questions. Two questions that are going to be a bit more specific than what makes a cool roller coaster. So you might just say kind of what is the maximum speed that I can even make this thing um, or how many turns is sensible or um, in what is the relationship between the number of inversions and the top speed or you know if I make it really really fast do I need to make it out of wood or steel that kind of thing. Nice, specific questions. So let's have a look at this this tool now. I'm actually going to play around with it a bit. You've got a couple of ways of setting the uh, the fields here. You can either drag uh, fields from this table, which, depending on the device you're working on, may or may not work really well. So I'm going to take the maximum height and drag that to the y-axis there. And that's going to plot that. Now, there's nothing on the x-axis. So what you've got is like, here are the coasters that are like 400 feet tall, and there are loads that are about 200, and loads and loads that are about 100 tall. It's just stacking them up. Now you could drag another variable to this axis, or you could just click here and then pick something, which is probably easier. So if I've got the max height, let's see what the top speed is like, and let's see if there's a look at that really, really strong correlation. Um, now on the right hand side here is some guidance that sort of takes you through. Um, setting up some things. So in addition to plotting two things against each other, you can also split the graph on something like whether it's sat down or inverted or whatever. So if I take the design and drag it into the middle, it will color code. Oh, look at all these different ways of sitting on a roller coaster. Who knew? So most of them are sitting down. There's a few inverted ones. There's the odd... I don't even know what fourth dimension means. I assume that means it's one of those ones where you're not really moving and you just got a VR headset on or something or a big screen. Um, so, you know, you could do this kind of thing. So some of these, uh, some of these will make more sense as legend things that are used to color the graph. Some will make more sense as axes. And I kind of want you to make at least one of these, take a screenshot of it, I think, and, um, and kind of dump it into your worksheet. So the A3 worksheet. So you've got your question, you've got your visualization and try and come up with some sort of analysis. And then you've got another question, another visualization and a little bit more analysis. So the questions can be quite simple, but they need to be specific. They need to refer to specific variables in this here. Um, and so it comes to some sort of conclusion. Once you've come up with your conclusion, go to the back to the lesson and there is an L3 question one and you are going to make a recommendation in here and you can all see each other's uh, and you can edit the thing afterwards. So this is effectively the class discussion part of the lesson. Um, so there we go. So um, do you feel confident this data has provided you with all the information you needed to make a recommendation? Well, you've gone around this cycle once if you've managed all of that. We had a problem. We uh, The plan was go to that website, so we didn't spend a lot of time there. We gathered some data, so that's just kind of playing around with it. Analysis, kind of spotting those trends, conclusions is what you're going to write in your worksheet. But you would likely need to go round and round this a few times in order to come up with anything that was really actionable. So in this lesson, we discuss the cycle of um, investigations, correlations versus causation, um, and using data to come up with recommendations. Next lesson, we will look at more investigative cycle work and uh, make more decisions about the data that we need.